how do you figure out what you want to do? So for the people in the room that are looking for jobs, do you know what you want to do? The yes hands that you know what you want to do? Okay, good. And who doesn't have any idea what in the world they want to do? Oh, a nice balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Kate, yeah, how do they figure out what they want to do? Well, first of all, that's okay. I, I was lucky. I felt I was the kid who put out the little Orville Street News and a little magazine when I was in high school, and I, I just always wanted to be producing content of some type. But I think a lot of us discover what we love much later. And I guess one of the questions is, do you really have to be doing something you love? And there have been a couple of interesting essays and blogs and books about this that says so kind of fooey. But I think it, what really makes you want to work those extra hours and be thrilled or, or to, to really uh, succeed at a certain level is when you are thrilled with what you do. Now, one of the things I just found when I was doing one of my career books that was really interesting was that so many of the women that I had interviewed had found what they wanted to do, that passion, not by sort of sitting in their living rooms or their parents' den with a notebook and a copy of What Colors Your Parachute, and uh, <laughs> he sold a billion books, uh, or the legal pad where, okay, on the left side are the things I love to do, and the right side are the things I, I don't. They had figured out what they wanted to do by bumping into it someplace. And I had a fashion editor. I mentioned this story in the book, but I had a fashion editor at Cosmo who one day I asked her, how did you decide to do this, Elaine? And I thought she was going to say, oh, I always want to be in fashion. I love clothes. I went to FIT. I don't read resumes, so I didn't know where she'd gone to college. And so she said, um, I actually didn't know what I wanted to do. I went to Africa with my boyfriend after college. I'd been an art major. And not knowing what I wanted, I went with him. And we were on a bus in Egypt. And the bus stopped. And we got out. And there was a German magazine doing a fashion shoot. And I, I had this eureka moment when I saw the stylist working with the model. And she said, it, it was at that moment I thought, I want to do what that girl's doing. And she said, sometimes you have to be on the bus to Cairo, I guess, to figure out what you want. <laughs> Usually you don't hear, the, no offense, those <laughs> fashion editors saying something quite so profound. But I love that. And I think she nailed it. You've got to be on that bus to Cairo. You've got to be using the next months particularly you're in New York City, to do some things that might be totally off the beaten track for you. Uh, you might take uh, people that you know who are already working, let's say you're getting together for a drink with them or lunch, ask to meet them where they work. Say, can I pick you up there? Uh, go to, um, is it uroulette.com, uh, and it's just nothing but different websites. And sometimes I go there to get ideas for my mysteries. You just scroll down, and it might be some, all these crazy websites next to uh, more famous ones. You can uh, literally go to Cairo, maybe not th right now, uh, but all these things that expose you, galleries, plays, everything that put you in touch with, the, uh, those eure eureka moments, because serendipity is really what you need to bank on when you don't know yet. So I think that's a great way to do it. And also, don't be afraid that if in the beginning you're in the right church, wrong pew, because there's a little bit of opportunity to still wiggle around in it. But I think there are also windows in your career where you need to do the math and say, you know what, if I'm going to, I, I spent two years, let's say, you spend two years in a magazine, but you sort of think you want to be in TV, you don't want to make it nine years in the magazine. You need to do the math, look at other women and men who have done what you want to do, and figure out their own timeline and arcs. Because I think that's an important thing to realize, OK, I can't dabble t too long here without p sort of getting more clarity b about what I want. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's all that having a sense of curiosity and having a huge sense of awareness of everything around you. From whether you're in the taxi, watch the little TV, or it, you're walking down the street, go into different stores, go to different events, talk to different people that you're with, be social, be friendly, all of those things, just all of those happen chance. Yeah. You know, Marie's Pop touching on uh, networking. 
which you know we could talk a little bit more about when looking for a job. But networking is so key. I mean, mm -hmm. it is really critical. And it was hard for me when I was younger because I just felt so socially awkward. The idea of going up to somebody and introducing myself was just painful. But it, everyone, as I've been touring with the book, every young person I talk to who has some great job, like at NBC, and I say, how'd you get the job? It was through someone they know. And one of the things you can do with networking is really just make it your mission to, that's where you find your mentors, that's where you find your sponsors, which are different than mentors, and, and they are what men tend to use more than women. They open doors for you. And it's really important to, I think, with, with networking, I found the formula that worked for me is to talk less than you listen. And it was, and Marie touched on this with the curiosity, it's contact plus curiosity that equals opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you wanna go, you, you see a little group talking, you go up, you introduce yourself, you listen, you get the, the gist of what's going on, you ask questions, and then you really begin to sort of form some people that you can begin to keep as contacts. And there's a great uh, thing a PR person once taught me is you do what she called the pre-ask. You don't immediately then contact the person and say, gee, we met last week, you know, can you open a door for me? Maybe you send them something that touch a link to something that touches on what you were talking about. So you've shown that, hey, it's not just about me. I'm doing something for you. Mm -hmm. And that, that makes it easier when you want to contact them to open a door or to make an email introduction. You've already had a little bit of that relationship bonding going on. Yes, because it is definitely a turnoff if somebody just out of the complete blue, or when we get, you know, you, how many resumes did you get, or referrals of somebody's uncle's cousin's brother's something or other that it's just really not appropriate to do. So maybe with the first, if you're shy, let's say this isn't something that comes naturally to you, um, that you can start even on the high school level. Who are your high school friends? And just keep, you know, like that you're too young for that Pantene, mm -hmm. there's a Pantene commercial? and so on and so on and so on and so yeah. on. The, the, you know, start with that group that gets together, like for me for high school, everyone got together Thanksgiving weekend. And so start with your core and keep building, building further, further and further out of your core. Because then once you get together with those high school people, then college people right. will layer on. And then this people, and it's just opportunity, not such aggressive opportunity, again, the happenstance. How many are on it. LinkedIn? Oh. Well, a preaching See? to the choir here. But, you know, that's where you, you build up that network. But you also don't just have this virtual network. You have the, the real network, too, that you're working simultaneously. And then always know that whatever job you're in, that is a feeding ground for no, more networking. Because the person who referred me from 17, somebody who left 17 mm -hmm. and went to another mm -hmm. job, and she was moved to Europe, and she said, then I recommend Marie. So I was literally going into jobs just on referral, and then it's just been mm -hmm. refer, refer, refer. So basically from the, this point today, every moment will be a networking opportunity for you for the rest of your career, especially if you do a really good job. It, and it, 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 yeah, and it's also really important. One mistake I see Gen Y making on, uh, regularly is they make it too much about them. It's when they network, they say things like, I, you know, I really want to work in San Francisco, or I really want to do this. And remember, the people who are looking for job candidates, they, they don't give a rat's ass that you want to work in San Francisco. They want to know what you're going to do for them. So really start to think about your elevator pitch and the things you say that are going to customize your message for that person. You know, what I loved when I was at Cosmo were people saying, you know, I just love Cosmo. I remember this one girl wrote me and she had this great, really authentic line. And the more authentic sounding you make your resume and your cover letters, the better. But she said, I just love lying on my bed in mismatched pajamas, coffee cup in hand, devouring my Cosmo. Now, what did that say to, about me, to me? It said, I could picture that girl. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, it turned out she couldn't come to New York City that point, but I wrote to her about two years later 
just to see what she was doing, she came in and saw me, and she was just so utterly charming and already incredibly successful. But it said, okay, I, I can picture you. You're different than the masses. I've already got an idea. So she kind of had me at, at, at mismatched pajamas. And then she talked about her love for the magazine. It wasn't just, I want to work in magazines. So hey, help me out. It was, mm -hmm. I want to work at Cosmo. And then she talked about what she would bring to Cosmo. So remember, no matter how much you want to work in San Francisco, make it about what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. So read everything. I mean, if it's a magazine, read it, every issue top to bottom, inside out, everything you can get if it's a television show. So for me, when I go and pitch the Today Show an idea, you better darn well believe I had to have watched the Today Show. <laughs> so I don't pitch them the thing that just aired 10 right. minutes ago. And that, that's when I watch GMA and I'm watching you know, CBS Sunday morning and I'm watching CNN the first thing. It's my job. And it's your job. And no matter what you're doing, whether you're looking for the job or going for the job or making changes, it is your responsibility to have that level of awareness.